Hi, I'm Liz. And I'm Rhea. Welcome to Karma's My Bitch, a podcast about love, sex, connection, abundance, joy, purpose, peace, and how life isn't simply the stories we tell ourselves. So really one of the main themes of this season has been oneness. Well, one of the main themes of this world has been oneness. <laughs> yes. You know, you can't go on any social media post or talk to any kind of spiritual anything without hearing the words 3D separation, 5D or oneness. Yeah. That's just, it's become a buzzword. Very much. Uh, but I don't think many people fully understand what it means or what it entails. A lot of the work that's out there now mm -hmm. feels like it's the quite at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I know from having listened to myself on season one of the podcast that I thought I knew everything then. But actually, I knew very little. I think we can all know a lot on the surface, right? There's like a lot of surface concepts. Yeah. That but I just think, yeah, exactly. People, I, want, yeah, the yeah, exactly. people kind of grasp or want to grasp and yeah. are open-minded yeah. enough to yeah. want to believe. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's, you know, when you look at consciousness, yeah. what, we, what I thought consciousness was and what it truly is, it's very different. Mm -hmm. You know, full body consciousness involves being a whole healed person. Yes. That is very hard to achieve <laughs> when you are running away or you're still holding fear and karma. Yes, absolutely. It just, it is, it is. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. oneness is very hard to achieve when you're still holding any ounce of yourself or someone else in separation. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more of a process. It's a lot more of a experience mm -hmm. than we think it is. Right. Therein lies the work, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's the work and, we and talk about. And to be about. honest, my experience of the work is, you know, being knocked on my ass yeah. many, many fucking times. It gets a little ugly. <laughs> it does. But, you know, if I think about it, I lived and breathed this shit, my shit, my mm -hmm. whole life. But I lived and breathed working through it for three, four years. Mm -hmm. And it was intensive and it was hard. Yeah. And I had to face a lot of crap I didn't want to face. Yeah. None of this is easy. Mm -mm. But none of this has to be work either. Right. No, because it is quite simple. And when you really see it for what it is, you're like, oh, I can do that. Yeah. I know I can do that. I mean, you yeah. said that several times. Even when things got tough, it was like, I know I can do this. Yeah. I don't want to do this. <laughs> I don't want to have to do this. If I mm. could, I would just, you know, be done but at the same time, you kept going. Because I think really, the more we pretend to ourselves mm -hmm. that we're okay, the more there's going to be to unravel when we realize we're not. Yeah. It's as simple as that. In sort of the old days, if you will, like by old days, I just mean a long, long, long time ago. And you're just sort of equating. When you were a child. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> long before I was born, <laughs> a couple centuries ago. Um, no, it was just the, you know, devotion to God was work. Like you had to flog yourself or be willing to torture yourself or really suffer for your, you know, your faith. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about the work and we say it's not pretty, it's not ugly, it's like, it, it, you know, it could almost start sounding like that. Yeah. But we're not saying torture yourself. No. The sooner you can come into more awareness – and see it for what it is, the more practical and doable it becomes. And I also think that there is this real belief mm -hmm. that we can only learn from pain. Yeah. And that's because we associated love with pain. Yeah. Because love wasn't love in Ooh. separation. It was a mirror to our pain. Right. Because we also, and we associated, makes sense why we had to record that episode, devotion is pain. Yeah. Right? Everything was always going to hurt well, devotion us. is another form of love. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. The reason we had to was because in order to work through separation, right, in order to really come into oneness in a world of complete separation. So I'm, I'm talking about like back in the days of the martyrs and, you know. It would be back in the days. This was like last week. <laughs> We still have martyrs. We still... We do. We have... But they're such superficial martyrs. But I mean, still, come on. But, but whether a superficial society exists and we live in it, or mm -hmm. whether it's much more ingrained, it still affects us. It still exists. It still exists. But I'm really thinking about the absolute aesthetics. And I do know that they still exist, right? I do know renunciates still exist. Yeah, but even there's someone who sacrifices themselves in a family unit, someone who sacrifices them themselves in a job. Mm -hmm. someone who sacrifices themselves in a relationship. Yeah. What we believe is love. Mm -hmm. What we believe is 
relationship, yeah. what we believe is success. Yeah. It's all sacrifice and pain. In order to be a healed person, which means in order to be closer to God, I have to suffer. Yes. But saying that, mm -hmm. the fastest ways I have healed mm -hmm. haven't been through suffering. Hmm. They've been through joy. Yeah. Because actually, there are two ways of doing this. Yes, we've got to hold our shit. And there are many ways it. of doing this. Yeah, yeah. But mm -hmm. in my experience, yeah, you've got to hold your shit and face it. Yes. And that part hurts. Yes, always. As you said, it's because, humbling. Because it hurt when it happened, and we've just been pushing it down, so it's still going to hurt. Mm -hmm. so it hasn't changed. It's not like it happened to us today. Mm -hmm. It happened to us years ago often. Yeah. But then there is another part where you can learn mm -hmm. through joy, because... That becomes, you know, that's a different thing, right? I don't mm -hmm. know how to explain why, but I know that I've learned just as much through joy. Yeah. And if not better mm -hmm. in many ways. Mm -hmm. But I, was, I wasn't capable of joy when I was yeah. still holding so much shit. That was the difference. A lot of times what we're going through might hurt, but it is just whatever we're going through is meant to remind us of the old hurt, not to create new hurt, right? Yeah. And that's all it is because once we've healed the hurt, the old hurt, New hurt doesn't necessarily present itself. If the potential for new hurt presents itself, we manage it differently once we've healed. Your capacity to manage it and face it is so present and so strong that it does, it just doesn't have, it doesn't hit the same way. When you talk about martyrs and when you talk about sacrificing for devotion, mm -hmm. you know, we've spoken about mission in this season. Yes. We've spoken about purpose. Mm -hmm. We've spoken about how the world needs the light through a dark age, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, all those things reinforce a fear that I've had hmm. since I was quite young, Yeah, which was that it was my fate to suffer. First of all, we've had lifetimes of suffering. So we are wired to believe. And again, it's also that in order to move through separation into oneness, when only separation prevailed, it was near impossible. It was really the journey of a lifetime. And was that the journey of the lifetime usually? Yes. To find some way to heal and to get closer. I mean, we would often miss the mark because separation, separation for what it is, you just do the fucking best you can. Right. But that's why one would have to toil time and again in order to be able to experience source and light and God, because being able to bring in and experience that, As we, just, I think we described in, in a previous episode, it was always the game of consciousness. And the game of consciousness begins with the game of karma. We've always been here for oneness, right? Plain and simple. And destiny was the route to get there. And our destiny was really to find a way to it. So destiny, yes. from what I've learned, and when I say learned, it's what I've experienced. Because I am that annoying person who has to understand it for herself. And we've joked about this in the first season, that if you tell me something's hot, I have to touch it. <laughs> It's just who I am. <laughs> like, I won't know unless I know. So destiny is effectively, from what I understand, mm -hmm. in come or out, really. It's, um, but I've only really experienced it. You know, we mostly have experienced it within our shit, our karma, our trauma, is making choices based on what we feel called to do mm -hmm. rather than what other people tell us to do mm -hmm. in whatever way. Effectively, destiny is following our heart in every choice and allowing those choices to unfold to the next one. And it's just choice by choice, stepping stone by stepping stone, yes. shaking off your shit and creating some good times where you can. So I thought, well, then that's destiny. Mm -hmm. That's it. And karma is the way to our destiny, right? Is if is you know our karmic story as we talked about is the way to heal ourselves. Because through every choice we make to follow our hearts and come back into ourselves and come back whole and healed is what brings us out of our karma and that's when we're able to realize our destiny. Yeah. Your karma is going to be the shitty stuff. Okay. Right? Your destiny is going to be the stuff that comes after the shitty stuff. So the shitty stuff teaches You move through that to heal, destiny is that marker of that healing point. Is it as simple as, I got ghosted, that's my karma, I transcended my shadow, that's my destiny? Yes. So And destiny is kind of the bits you're meant to achieve, and mm -hmm. karma is the bits that hurt to get you there. Yes. To, When you're in to, your karma. To get you to wake up, right? Mm. Or, you know, whatever. To, to 
wake up to your hurt and all of that and face it. So yes. So it's not our destiny to suffer per se. Karma is our suffering. Destiny is the result of the choices we make and how we heal that karma or if we keep perpetuating that karma. Is that also destiny? No. That's that free will we talk about that comes only in 3D. Destiny is the good bits. Yes. We're all here. Okay. Again, as we said in point A, we're all here for oneness, right? So we're not, we have this belief because of 3D and separation and all the bullshit that's going on inside of us that we're constantly toiling through that life is just really shitty. It's just a series of really shitty experiences punctuated by a few joyful or blissful moments if you're lucky. But the reality is here he, that we're meant to create lives that don't, that aren't meant to be so shitty, right? Until we've worked through all those shitty moments that there doesn't need to be more of them. Of course, we're human. So in order, and the, the beauty of our human experience and why we are having this human experience is we are meant to experience this entire spectrum of emotion, right? So of course, certain things are going to happen that are going to move us across that spectrum where we're not always going to exist in, you know, on the one side of joy, peace, bliss, whatever. Yes, we can get there, but it doesn't mean that those other moments won't come in. We'll manage them differently. But they won't be our destiny. No, that's just what was needed to get us to wake up to the separation within. But once you've healed the separation within, they're not so personal, right? We just don't carry it the same way. We can feel them and they can be very sad, but again, it won't feel like our entire, you know, our world or our lives or everything just gets ripped to shreds every time something happens. Okay. Yeah. So fate is a 5D, fifth dimensional oneness concept, really. So we never had fate in 3D? Most have never been able to experience it due to where they're at in their karmic evolution. Is fate also positive like destiny is? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. You don't seem to think so, but we'll talk about that. Okay. Okay. So fate is the very, 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 very large realization of our purpose. If our purpose is to be the best version of ourselves, we can be, right? Yeah. As we have hammered home this season. I know that because I feel like we just purpose, purpose, purpose like all the time. And it's not best version of ourselves that other people think we are. It's best version of ourselves that we think we are. Oh, God, yeah, exactly. And it's not from a I could be better place. No. It's It's just to be the best version of ourselves is to recognize we are always doing our best. Exactly. And being the best, I'm living my best life. And it's not in the how that's defined by anyone else. It's how it's defined by me. Yeah. I'm literally doing whatever the fuck I do whenever I want to do. Yeah. And it's not a static concept because we're here to grow and evolve our best life will and the version whatever version of that will always be changing as well so year to year we're not expected to be in the same place doing the same thing necessarily right we're We're dynamic beings so whatever it is that however we're being is also dynamic and that's not our destiny no so fate is the amalgamation of all the possibilities and probabilities of that self. So if our purpose is to be the best version of ourselves all the time, then fate is the sum total of all the possibilities and probabilities of that self. So fate isn't one path at all. We couldn't even describe the number of variables that would be tied into a single person. So you could hit your fate. You have a choice. You do. You have choices. And so of course, your will is important. Because your will is the decide, you know, is what decides it. It's not like how in 3D you require free will. Because free will is simply the choice to keep yourself in separation. Yes, it's your choice to keep yourself in separation and operate within that spectrum of polarity. Well, it's I'm going to be good or I'm going to be bad, right? Yeah. Well, we definitely have spoken about this, and I get this quite clearly. So Mm. the more you connect yourself and you become conscious and whole, yes, the less you can do the less choices you can make, mm-hmm. right? So technically, you could make um, loads of choices well, in not, a situation. Oh, you mean sort of like the fewer choices become available or seem to, to be available? Well, no, it's as simple as, whereas before, let's say, I'm going to use a really stupid example. Whereas if, you know, you're always used to sublimating your needs for someone else and then you work through your crap and you're like, actually, no, I'm, I'm going to choose myself yeah. a little bit more. Like, yeah, might be... I think it would help me to have a boundary here. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Then this when is it, not a stupid example. No, Why would so, you say so when because it's you know, so when 
a situation arises which either involves you doing what you've always done or putting up a boundary, you physically, mentally, emotionally will not be able to do anything but put up the boundary. Mm -hmm. And which is what we mean about following your heart. Yeah. Because once you've tapped into your heart, you know which choice you're going to make at every step. Yeah. Right? So that's where free will goes out the window because technically, yes, you could do a plethora of things, but also technically you can't anymore. Yeah. And that's what we you mean. You just won't. Yeah. It just wouldn't even occur to you. And if it does, it wouldn't even... It feels terrible. It would feel, it, it does. It does because it would bring you back into that space of separation within yeah. and nobody wants to go there once they're not in it. Anymore. And that's the tough thing when you're interacting with other people mm -hmm. who have, who are still remaining in those patterns yeah. is that you feel like I either have to do what I've always done, which I don't like, or do something so different that it'll rock the boat, which I also don't like. Right. And then it feels like you have no choice that's clear. Right. So effectively for anybody who might find themselves in that scenario the simplest maybe not easy but the simplest thing you can ask yourself in that moment is what is going to bring me peace you don't have to break it down very much you don't have to analyze it you don't have to try to work out all the consequences of how that is going to impact you later just in that moment step by step minute to minute what is going to bring me the most peace right now I'm just going to keep going in the most peaceful way possible, and I will deal with however and whatever comes later. But will is different. Well, yeah. So when you're in your fate, you're still operating from a place of will, right? Your own self-determination still exists. So when you are operating from fate, as you said, the choices, the possibilities, the probabilities become even greater. So each choice you make leads to another choice. And another. And fate is so large that existing within the boundaries of your fate is not limiting. It's not as limiting as destiny. Because destiny, you're still operating in 3D, right? You're still kind of maybe in your karmic story a bit. Whereas once you've transcended all that, a lot more opens up. And you can sort of see that, you know, when people make big life changes much later in life, because suddenly once they're out of their karma, it's like, what the fuck was I doing all that? Why was I living my life like that. Why was I even living there when it suits me so much more to be here? So what's written before you come then? Your fate. Your fate is written. Which is? Before you come into body. All the, the hundreds of thousands of different <laughs> possibilities and probabilities that this life could be in. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we don't have, we don't have that much time on this earth plane. Do we need more options than that? No, no. I'm just, mm -hmm. it's interesting. And, same. and it's, I'm, I mean, I'm asking the same question. Okay. That's what I'm asking. I was like, okay. really guys, do you want that in there? That number? And they're like, yeah, I'm like it's, fine. I was like, okay. <laughs> so then does destiny then exist in, in 5D? No, because once you've transcended your karma and you've entered oneness, destiny becomes moot. Because your destiny was to get rid of your karma. Yeah, pretty much. So once you've lived your destiny, you're out of your karma, mm -hmm. then you're ready to live your fate, which is explore all the possibilities exactly. and probabilities. Suddenly I don't need this one job. I don't need to live here. I don't need to have this type of relationship. I don't need to put up with any of this bullshit. So Every choice more. will lead to something else. Exactly. And that so much more is available to you than you originally thought or had ever conceived of. Could one of them be for me to suffer? No, because so you're not well, meant to suffer in 5D. We're here to transcend our suffering through our karmic experience. When you're not in your karmic experience, you're not meant to suffer. If you do, you got to understand what circumstances are you choosing that is bringing that about. What am I not owning that is somehow leading me down this path of suffering? It's the how soon can I get out of my suffering? How yeah. soon can I wake up, become a conscious being and end this bullshit already? That's the point. Mm. As to sort of sum up, our lives end up being shaped by two things. Our karma, right? Which is the suffering bit that we have to burn through in order to become fearless and come into our divine selves. And our destiny are the high notes we hit along the way of yes. the karma. But it's karma or fate. So once we've burned out the karma and we come into oneness, we've got the fate. But we are already born with this fate. We just, most of us had never even lived a dot of it. Precisely. So depending on the choices we make throughout our karmic story, we're either moving along the various trajectories of that fate, or our lives become so dictated by our pain and our fear 
that we become locked in a loop, which we might call fate or have thought was fate. Like you had thought, you know, God, my fate must just be to have this like really shitty experience like over and over. But that doesn't have to do with our fate at all. That's really just the karmic bit. (laughs) If you say that fate starts once we're out of our karma. Well, we get to experience it consciously once we're out of our karma. But, But we're always living in our fate as well when we are from the time we are born. Well, because the first step of our fate is to get rid of our karma. Therefore, we are living in it. Exactly. But really, when we're out of our karma, karma has determined in terms of the possibilities and probabilities is just where we're starting from. Are we starting from London? Are we starting from California? Are we starting... If you imagine it like a a game where Mm -hmm. you can turn left and right anywhere you go. It's just where is that start point? And that start point is dictated by how we've gone through our destiny. Yes, Exactly. And how we've managed our karma. Yes. That's it. Precisely. So it it is living our fate, but it's a bit like saying, technically, you arrive somewhere Mm -hmm. after a car journey when you get out of the car at the destination, right? Mm -hmm. But you could also argue that you started that journey when you got in the car at your house. Mm -hmm. So really, karma was here to get us to a point where we were able to create everything that we wanted. Mm -hmm. And it was the way to get us to the starting point of our fate, which was just to live a magical life. But we spent so long in our karma, we thought that it was our fate. Mm -hmm. And we thought that life was suffering. Yes. And we thought that love was pain. Right. When really all it was were tools to get us to hit our high notes learn the bits that we needed to learn, Mm -hmm. learn that we were whole and perfect and divine. Yes. And then go and live it. Your purpose does not bring you into your fate. Your purpose helps you realize your fate. That as I own myself, as I become the best version of myself, wow, okay, there's so much more to the life I know already, right? Because I can see it a bit more for what it is. Because I can see myself for who I am. Like karma is teaching you all the tools to remember your whole and perfect and mm-hmm. all the rest of it. Yes. Purpose is teaching you all the tools on how to express that. Yeah. So you're learning that you're whole and perfect and you're learning how you want to express your wholeness and your perfectness mm-hmm. and your purpose. So then when you're out of your karma you can then express your wholeness and perfectness in a myriad of ways. Mm -hmm. But the reason why it's not millions and billions and only a hundred thousand is because you... Hundred thousands. Hundreds of thousands (laughs) is because because you are who you are. Mm -hmm. And just like I was saying with the destiny bit, that like there are choices that you can make and there are choices that just don't feel good. Mm -hmm. It's a bit like that. There are going to be possibilities and probabilities Mm -hmm. that you're not going to want to do because they're not in line with who you are. But so purpose is the largest expression of our divine identity. Now, this is not us redefining purpose, but it, it is adding a sort of nuanced label to it because divine identity very simply expresses that we are good enough. So our karmic story says, I am not good enough, Right. When we've transcended that karmic story and we've burned out our fear and, you know, we're really beyond ego, when we are in that space of good enough, we're able to exude the very light that we bring to all we do. If you are living your purpose Mm -hmm. and therefore you are existing in a state of love, you are shining your light for everyone to see. Yes. And you're light, right? You recognize that you're good enough, that you believe that things will work out. Mm -hmm. You have faith that no matter what happens, it will always be in your highest good and some unknown force has got your back. You trust it, you hope it, you you know it, and you're just kind of in flow and living a good fucking life, right? So you're light. Yeah. And you're holding light. And the reason why you're light and you're believing all these things is because you recognize that you are part of something bigger. Mm -hmm. You recognize that you are, you would call it divine, but I would, you know, we are part of something bigger and lighter and magical. I guess divine identity is actually quite a good word for it because it's like, I am (laughs) good. I am good enough. I am enough. Yes. I'm more than enough. Yeah. And I'm light. I can create whatever I want from that space. And the more light that we bring, the more magic we're capable of. 
Light is knowledge. So all the light that you hold, this ident- this divine identity, is knowledge. It contains within it all the building blocks. So the more light you have, the more knowledge you hold. Okay. Now it could get a little confusing. So just keep a very open mind when I describe this. Knowledge itself is not what we think it is. Because that was in separation. It's ex- knowledge in 3D is expectation. It's expectation. It's one plus one equals two. It's the things that we could sort of quantify. And it's connecting the wrong dots to each other. Well, it's connecting dots to make life suitable, livable, less horrible, right? And that's how it worked, right? It's something we could understand. It's narrow. It's linear. Now, when you are in the larger fabric of your fate, when you are much more expanded, operating from a place of higher consciousness, which we will not talk about in this episode, but when you are really in that space, Knowledge has to do with the ability to connect and see all things for what they are. I'm just going to let you. Okay. So the more light you have, the more knowledge you hold. As in you can become a container for all the knowing that you need to have. So the more light you hold means the more substance is contained within that light. So the more substance that is brought forward into the physical realm through our being, the more that substance takes form. Does that make sense? So if light is knowledge, right? The more light we hold, the more we can express that light in the physical realm. So once we've been able to then express that and bring that into the physical realm, the more that that knowledge can take form. If you are in your purpose, that light, that divine identity is being expressed, right? Oh, I forgot we just learned divine identity. Yes. (laughs) Okay. So so when you're in your divine identity, which is basically when you know you're good enough, you're just full of light. Yeah. And you're full of possibility and... And potential. You're full of possibility, full of potential, you're full of hope. When you're holding all that light, Mm -hmm. you just have a different sense of knowledge. You do. Your knowing does take a different form, doesn't it? It's almost like then when you do stuff, it's like almost like magically it works out. What it actually is doing is you're making that light have form on this physical plane. That light takes form because of what you do. Which makes sense because if you think about it from a karma's karma's perspective, if in your head you're thinking you're not good enough and you're making choices from that space and you're expecting everything to blow up, Mm -hmm. and you're holding not so much light, it all kind of does blow up. So if you're holding a lot of light and you know that you're good enough, it's probably going to work out differently. Yeah. And so you, in karma, you are creating, even if it's just perspectively, a world where you are not good enough. Yes. So when you're out of your karma, you are creating a world where you are. Mm -hmm. What you described is effectively true manifestation or what I prefer to call magic. Law of attraction says that we attract, draw, or magnetize what it is that we desire, want, need, etc. But when we're coming from a space of our divine identity, whatever it is that we truly desire or require to best express that identity is able to come to fruition by the very fact that it is a part of who we are, right? It is not something that is separate from us. It actually is just a natural expression of you, but in a way that does not require the mental body to get you there. But it's about being the full embodiment of your purpose to be able to do it. That's where this concept of magic versus manifestation, either classic or modern, that's where they differ. Because much of manifestation is still very much mental body work. Okay. Okay. It's not spiritual body work. It's not really emotional body work. It can be. But again, it's that's kind of mental body, emotional body trying to heal those, right? Work, get them to work together. But really, the only time you can truly, truly manifest or magic anything Mm -hmm. is when you're already a whole divine being. Exactly. Because that's when you understand that you are God. Exactly. So So then everything, of course, you can manifest it. Precisely, because it's from that place of higher consciousness. Yeah. And that's why people can certainly manifest in small ways, Right. But the real magic stuff, that stuff, the stuff that's really truly in line with purpose and that allows you to not just be in flow, because flow is just an example of, you know, of it in sort of like an easy, small scale stuff. I need something. 
Oh, it came. Yay, universe provides. Love it. It's all very lovely. That's what people are being taught as yes, manifestation. Yes, exactly. And, you know, so yes. So what we're saying is it can be much bigger than that. It is much bigger than that. I mean, it's emphatic. It is just not just a truth. It is a fact. But our smallness, which is a result of our separation and our experience in separation, has us reaching for the small stuff. Like when you talk about normal manifestation, if you're still in your karma, then you're not able to really follow your heart. You're wondering, is this a test? Mm -hmm. Am I doing the right thing? Have I manifested wrong? You know, you're still believing that you're not good enough to get what you truly want. Because you're in your karmic story and you're doing it from the mental body. Yeah. So when you really believe that you know you're good enough to get whatever you want, you just get it. It just comes. The distinction, as we said, between modern manifestation teachings and magic really has to do with the divine identity because we really have to be completely and wholly in that divine expression in order to truly bring in that which will best serve our purpose and bring forward all the essential possibilities and probabilities that are written on our fate. So just like you were describing, you know, when you were sort of in, you know, feeling needy and not feeling good enough and, and just wanting and wanting, not just for the sake of wanting, but in order to feel better, we're going to be all over the place. We're going to be reacting and acting out of our karma. But that keeps us much farther away from our light. It keeps us not operating through our fate. And then it keeps us out of our purpose. And we're not here for that. We're not here. It's And and as a result, that keeps us small. I need somebody to give this to me. I need this to happen. So then, right? That's not creatorship. That's not co-creatorship. That's not even like manifestation ship, if you will, right? I know that's not a real word. Don't get on me. That is just, I need something to source me and I can't do it myself. So really, as we say that we're here for oneness, divine identity, and I guess this is season five, divine identity is ultimately our common goal. And that's what arrives through oneness consciousness. Oh my God, there's a step after oneness consciousness. <laughs> I <news>. know. <laughs> Thank you for listening. For more information, articles, and inspiration, find us at karmasmybitch.com and at karmasmybitch.insta. And if you liked what you heard, please subscribe and leave us a review.